we're here. Thanks for having a virtual couple with me. Nice to see yeah, you both. Sure, pleasure. Nice Do you know what? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> In. You know, for years we said, you know, I'm never going to do any uh, press or any TV for my house, you know, keep it private. And now you just let anybody in. Yeah, I come know. on, Phil. And let's start with where you are. And is it just the two of you that are in lockdown together? No, our daughter's with us here um, at the moment as well. Right. Yeah. Well, you know, Harley came here as soon as the possibility of, being, you know, being locked down on her own. So she came to us. The thing that, though, that we did, we were isolating long before they said isolate. Because mm. we knew that it, we should have been isolated long with time before. So uh, we yeah. were kind of doing that. And I was wearing masks and gloves way before anyone else ever thought. And they, everyone was looking, thinking, she's infected. And I was like, no, I'm just protecting me and you. So. You know, you've got to use your common sense, haven't you? You know, everyone's saying, oh, why aren't the government saying wear the mask when you're out? But if you want to wear the mask when you're out, then do it. You know, yeah. don't wait for somebody to tell yeah. you, you know, if you think something is common sense. Yeah, no, absolutely. Well, it completely makes sense. Now, everyone, when I've been out and about, there are loads, everyone's wearing a mask. It's just the dumb thing. I'm really, really relieved about that because I was really adamant for a long time ago that we should be wearing masks because yeah. even when years ago in the 80s, we used to travel to Japan a lot and people were wearing masks then. If they had colds, it was a polite thing they would do to wear masks. So... It seems such common sense. Yeah, don't spread your germs. But Shirley being Shirley was making really pretty ones. <laughs> Flowers coming out and little fairies. Oh, yeah. Find some cowboys and Indians for Martin yeah. or something. See, but then I went to Hong Kong when it was um, the SARS virus was oh. everywhere. And um, in Hong Kong, everyone had masks on them, but they all had designer ones, like with them um, Chanel logo <laughs> or Gucci print. Yeah. They all had this on. It was, it was quite yeah. interesting. I think that's going to be the future. I think designers will be onto that, and and that will be. I mean, it, as I say, in, in in Hong Kong, as you said, that was part of fashion. And oh I no, you've we given the plan away now. See, <laughs> I was thinking there's, there's definitely some Kemp merchandise there, isn't there? With yeah. a picture on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And Martin, do you know what? Before we were before today, I was trying to work out when we last or when we first uh, met because I know that I met you many times when you were playing Steve in EastEnders. Yeah, of course. And I used to host Entertainment Day on GMTV. Yeah, because you used to, used to come down to the set, didn't you? Yeah. You came down to um, uh, Wolford. Yeah, that's right. So we came to see you there. And then, but you left there, was it 2002 or something like that? Uh, I think it was 2002, yeah, 2001, 2002. And then you did, I remember coming and meeting you on set of a TV drama, and it was with Michelle Collins. That's right, yeah. Oh, was it called Can't, Can't Buy Me Love or something? Can't oh, Buy Me Love. That the lottery winner. Yeah, the, the lottery winner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, which uh, I loved. And I love Michelle. You know, Michelle's a great actress, and I love working with her, and that was a real thrill making that one. Yeah, but it's so funny because um, I interviewed you so many times as an actor. I obviously know you both as singers, but I have never in, like interviewed you as a musician. It's always been as an actor. So it's so funny. You've got so many hats. That's it. Yeah, I know. yeah I've got too many. <laughs> I, know. I as well didn't realise until recently that you're a proper DJ as well. You've been, you were yeah. meant to be touring all summer as a DJ. All summer. You know, I've been going out for the past year and a half, two years, playing 80s nights. Oh, and uh, 80s nights to 1,500 people on a Thursday, Friday, Saturday who just go absolutely mental. And it's kind of like the, the most euphoric atmosphere I have ever been in in my life. And I come home, don't I, Shirley? And Shirley knows how much I love it, you know, because... I'm literally buzzing as if I've just done a play to 100,000 people with Spandau Ballet. It's the same kind of feeling because when you're playing to 1,500 people, mainly like 40, 50 Women. year olds, <laughs> and uh, they are just loving and singing along to every moment. And uh, yeah, I mean, we uh, had something like 150 shows planned this year for the rest of the year which obviously, you know, we're in danger of losing lots of them. But uh, I just want to see us get over this. And no matter how long it takes, I would rather be locked down for another four, five, six weeks and get rid of it completely than go out there too early and see it coming back. 
Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, it's got to be amazing if we could just get back to normal, but I don't even know what normal is anymore. No. I mean, do you think that things have changed for you? Have you, have you got a new normal now, you two? Well, to be honest with you, I think things were a bit out of control before all this happened anyway. I think the influence of needing so much stuff, buying more for less, the waste. What I've noticed, really noticed, is that I'm not wasting as much food. Mm. I would kind of go to the shops to buy fresh food most days and then think, oh, that's old, two days old. Now I'm really hanging on to food a lot more. So my whole shopping, my you know, process is definitely going to change. Yeah, when you open that caviar, you don't throw the rest of it away. <laughs> you do not eat caviar. We saved the team. We no, saved the second half of it. We're really learning. I'm really learning to kind of. I mean, you made banana bread yesterday from some banana. I said, don't write bananas. We're going to make some. Martin oh, made banana bread. I'm baking a lot. It's baking I? so much. I've put on so much weight. From, and it's not from my disaster on the Great Bake Off. Yeah. Right? But I thought the one thing I'm going to do is learn. How, shall I show you some? Yeah, go on. Oh, God. Yeah, go on. Yeah, I made banana good. bread the other day and it was disastrous. So it'd be nice to kind of like stuck to the, the baking tin. Oh my goodness. Okay. Look at this. So I have been making these, what are they called? Cruffins. Cruffins, right? Which is beer bread, right? Which are absolutely delicious. delicious. And yesterday I made this, didn't I? Half eaten. Yeah, half eaten piece of banana loaf. Oh my God, I would literally put on so much weight if I was living with you guys. Yeah. I have. I put my jeans on. I thought they must be my daughters. <laughs> so, um, but that, if that's the worst of our worries that we put on weight, that's fine. You know, you can just lose that. But loads of people are picking up bad habits. I mean, lots of people, when I say lots of people, I'm asked to sing this on behalf of a friend <laughs> um, <laughs> look, people are getting are getting very messy because it's like oh I'm in the house I'll tidy up later but just putting it off or eating rubbish like how many times have you opened that cupboard that has all the biscuits just yep. to oh, pass the day yep. I've got a crisp cupboard but I eat the family bags that's just for me now just to, but we're, we're low I've got to go out and buy some crisps yeah <laughs> I mean it is we are we all of us you know went through a stage where we just ate too much and everything you bought in and you put into that cupboard, you just wanted to eat straight away. But I think we're just reaching a point now where we're all saying, hang on, wait. let's get back healthy. to normal. You know, okay, let's so, so here's the question then. What fitness are you doing? Because everyone seems to be doing something. Yes. Well, I will tell you, I started doing an online um, LB uh, legs, bums and tums class. <laughs> and then I hurt my back. So um, I've got to stop. I hurt my back doing it. So um, yeah. I like being really physical. So for me, I'll just really get the hoover, hoover, clean the windows, you know, just I, I'm more of a housework. But, yeah, you know, we have a couple of dogs and uh, we've been taking our dogs on really nice long yeah. walks, uh, especially yesterday was amazing, you know, walking through the Bluebell Woods. Ah. That, at the moment are uh, just breathtaking uh, and so really nice long walks but um i don't know I, mean, I am waiting at the moment for the doorbell to go because i've got a delivery of an exercise bike that i'm going to put outside you ordered it about a month ago oh, it's driving me insane you know when you order something you want it straight away yeah. and uh, obviously you can't get it straight away at the moment but it's good. And now it's raining and I have to do it in the garden in the rain because I'm not yeah. having that in the house. Oh, it would be interesting if it becomes one of those exercise bikes that's really used for a week and then it becomes something that you hang clothes off. You just hate yeah. It. yeah. Absolutely. But, yeah. you know, at least you get a good week out of it. <laughs> exactly. And um, Well, look, it's lovely to have you both here. And I love the fact that last year you did the album together, okay? Yeah. So I have, in my head, you just sing together at home being romantic. Is that true? <laughs> It was when we were making the album because we were in this kitchen just singing constantly over around the kitchen. So um, yeah, but, yeah. I mean, we did we we did a couple of shows this year as well, which was amazing. To because I never thought I'd be singing with Martin and on stage with him. And we were at the Birmingham Symphony Hall on stage with a you know sixty piece orchestra. That moment was incredible. Uh, so was yeah, you you useful. kind of think you've been with someone a long time. There's not much else you can't do, and then you end up doing something like that so it's a real blessing to make that so, album but now that you're here in lockdown together you must be i mean this is the time when everyone starts thinking and we're all getting creative you must be coming up with more ideas for down the line always i'm exhausting myself i i, so I keep thinking i have to stop because i can't cope with the ideas i think it's that empty vessel when there's something empty more ideas can go into it 
But when you're working and you're chasing everything, you don't get those ideas. You know, so it, this is a, a positive time to it, get ideas. Yeah. It's a funny thing in our ha household, you know, because we have Roman, who's, uh, you know, the breakfast time capital DJ, and he's always looking for new ideas. So he will always call up and say, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? My daughter works in uh, in media. She uh, she is always looking for new ideas. She's a producer. So um, and there's me and Shirley are looking for new ideas. And so it's kind of like we live in this media hub, you know, of yeah. everyone searching for a, for a good ideas. And and it's really nice, you know, and it's fruitful sometimes. But uh, Shirley and I work <laughs> together. Uh, Shirley and I work on a little project together that we can't tell you what it is at the moment but it's really exciting okay oh that's i'm now i'm really intrigued you can't even get you can't like say that and then not even give a look <laughs> did you get it and also when's the um am i right in saying there's a mockumentary coming come on I oh just, man I yeah i'm so excited about this yeah. it is funny is this yep. inspired by uh the bros one perchance well, you know it was actually written before the bros documentary and uh, you know the Ross documentary wasn't written that was a proper thing that kind of went a bit haywire you know and uh, told the real story which was really interesting but um, Gary and I is a proper comedy it's a mockumentary and it's made to make you laugh it's hysterical and yes. it is one of the funniest things I have ever seen and done in my life you know when uh, you make something and you show it for the first time in a screening room and you're all, everyone's very nervous, you know, what the reaction is going to be. And the reaction was just laughter from the beginning to the end of the hour. And I went home one day and I got Shirley in it as well. I had a small part. Small My part. first acting role. She was so fantastic, I can't tell you. But hang on a minute, if it's a mockumentary, it's based on, based on you, I guess. So... Yeah. What's your, is your small role, are you still playing exactly who I you are? Okay, sure. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> yeah, so, so it's us, it's me and Gary and Shirley and it's heightened okay. to the point where crazy. you would get, imagine kind of French and Saunders doing Gary and Martin Kemp oh. and it's kind of that. And it's just so over the top. And it's at times I was filming it, looking around at Gary and thinking, we're just like Lauren Hardy, you know, and it's like that. And so it's really funny. It's refreshing mm. because you haven't kind of seen that type of humour for a long time. So yeah. that's the nice So part. it's going to be on BBC Two and it's, um, we're waiting for an, a TX date. Oh, I hope they bring it soon. It'd be brilliant to watch now. We're all yeah. We're all desperate for something good to watch. We are, exactly. Well, to be honest, it was going to be on a bit sooner, and they shuffled the schedules around uh, to save it. Yeah. yeah, but it's coming out. Uh, it will be on very soon. Okay. Well, I really look forward to it. Is there? Yeah. Do you know when you do things like that? Do you remind yourself how much you love acting as well? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Because you, you know, it's a bit like when acting is a little bit like. Some people play golf when they say they play golf because all they're trying to do is to try and get a little ball in a little hole. And it doesn't, you know, you can't think of anything else while you're doing that. It's just about doing that. And so it takes your brain somewhere else. And when you're acting, it does the same sort of thing. You are somebody else, even if you're playing, playing yourself in the heightened version. It sends your brain into this vacuum where you're not worrying about anything else. You're not thinking about other people or, or stuff you, you've got to do later on in the day. You're just in the moment. And so it's a, a really lovely relief. So is there is there any more acting coming up at the moment? Um, there might be, yeah. There might be after this. After, we'll see where, we uh, do. Yeah, we'll see where this Kemp's documentary goes, you know, because I would love to do more because yeah. I love so much working with Gary as well. Because he's a real perfectionist and it makes me work better. Yeah. Oh, no, it's good. It's, do you know, um, Shirley, I have actually met you before when um, it was a long time ago, though. And you will probably not even remember, but I do. I was, I was about eight and we were in, hey. we were in Spain and you, you were supporting Scylla Black. Really? There yeah. you go. I don't remember that. Well, and it was uh, uh, Pepsi and Shirley were supporting um, Silva, and I met you because I got your autograph. 
Oh, <laughs> I remember that was crazy. about that. Great. Yeah, it was it would uh, it was definite a definite 80s experience. But um, yeah. how, how long have you two been together for now? Um well uh nearly 40 years. We've been married 32 One? years. Two? No, 32 years this year. Wow. Yeah. So but we were together six years, so that's 38 years, kind of, yeah. Wow. Yeah. And Spandau's anniversary is 40th of last year, is that right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, about you that. You didn't even do something massive for it. I would have loved to, Jenny. I would have loved to, you know, but uh, the things, the way things are at the moment with Spandau, Spandau you know, we're, we're very volatile and uh, we're best friends when we're together and we're, we're not when we're apart. Uh, and trying to get us together is so difficult. You know, I think... Too many things have happened and too many things have been said over the years that make it so difficult nowadays. It would be um, lovely if they on. did an NHS show. Though. Yeah, okay. but, you know, you know it's, it, it, listen, I'm always up for it. But it's about getting five people to say yes at the same time. Yeah, I guess it is quite difficult to do that. But you know what? It's it's a shame because as far as I spoke to Tony and he and he was saying it was unlikely as well. And I was just saying it's a shame because as fans, it would be yeah. amazing for us. And That's also true. Yeah, he was he was doing great. He was doing really well. Um, cool. again, also in lockdown. So but it was yeah. it's just a shame because we'd all love to hear you all together. Yeah. Yeah. You need to talk to Tony again. Listen, yeah. you know, I'm I'm always up for it. And you know, it's about it's a really weird thing. It, it sometimes it's about it's about ego a lot of the time, you know, people getting over arguments. Uh, and I have to tell you, I I would work, I worked, because I've been grown, I've grown up acting, I think I've worked with a lot of people that I don't quite get on with over the years, but you have to, you know. And uh, so kind of, I think my look on it is different. And uh, I would do it tomorrow. But uh, I don't know how many people want to see it out there. And that gives me a buzz. But um, trying to get everybody to do it tomorrow is difficult. It's a bit harder because we're doing the, we're currently asking all the listeners to vote for the smooth all time top 500. It's the biggest chart ever and Spandau yeah. will yeah. rank highly in there. Which is your favourite of all the Spandau songs? You have to answer this as well, Shirley. I've got to be true for me because that was near when I met Martin. So it's all oh. kind of in that love bubble of beautiful song, romance. <laughs> so yeah, that has the best, uh, but I love gold as well. Yeah, I mean, I, I think my favourite is uh, Through the Barricades. Right. I really like that song. I think when uh, in 2015, when we got back off, we, had, we never saw each other for about 15 years. It was one of those arg small arguments that just lasted a few days. You know. And uh, 15 years later, we got back together and uh, the first song that we played in a rehearsal room was Through the Barricades. And it kind of became our song. Yeah. Uh, so that one, for me, will always uh, have a big meaning. Yeah, I love it. I love that you, well, I don't know if it's true or not, but you say that you first saw Shirley on Top of the Pops. And then you and yeah. Gary did this uh, magazine recently. And on the front of the magazine, it said, your quote, Top of the Pops is just like Tinder. And I was like, well, that would make sense how you first saw each other there. Then. It's like a, <laughs> that was Gary's quote. That, that, yeah, that, let's get this right. That was Gary's quote. I read that. I read that straight away, like, hello? Yeah, that was Gary's quote. It was that, Gary. It was Gary's <laughs> quote. And uh, it was what Gary was trying to say, really, was it was the only time that you saw people in other bands. You know, it was uh, in those BBC corridors. <laughs> it, it, was, it was the only time that you got together. <laughs> And anyway, you'll have to ask Gary about yeah. that. I have a feeling that Top of the Pops was like Freshers Week at university and it was just a bit like a bit of fun and everyone was kind of like swapping numbers and having a good time. But it was crazy because obviously growing up in the 70s, you didn't have any access to any other music shows. That was your yeah. everything, that show. So to grow up being the one show that you loved, then to be on that show, it was so surreal. You were just, everyone was just kind of fascinated by each other, anyone that was there. So... Yeah, it was, it was incredible to be on, to take part of that. Yeah, it was interesting watching Roman in the jungle as well. He did so brilliantly on that. But also, uh, he gave a really good insight into your life, can I just say as well. Really? And he was, well, he was just, when he was in the jungle and he was, he told everyone how, um, on your first day, that George Michael had come along as well. I, I did not know yeah. that at all. But you've got to get this right, it wasn't George Michael then. 
you know, he was, um, uh, just my he mate. was Shirley's mate, <laughs> George Michael. Uh, and, uh, it, but we spent all night, you know, on the first day trying to get rid of him. And uh, we couldn't, you know, trying to shake him off. Uh, uh, and he couldn't, we couldn't. But he, you know, we miss him dearly. He's, uh, he, he was part of our life, part of our family. And um, we, we still miss him right now, don't we? Yeah, he's godfather to both Harley and to Roman as well, isn't he? Yeah, but he was more than that. He was yeah. just part of their family. Yeah. You know, oh, so yeah. obviously, you know how hard it is when you lose people you love. Absolutely. In fact, it was interesting because Adam Lambert, you know, as in he sings with Queen, yeah. Bird, he has recently done an interview and he has said he would love to play George Michael if there was ever a biopic of him. Yeah, very good. That's a good idea. I know. That it's is a good idea. Biopics are kind of very of the moment as well. So I was yeah. wondering if um, you had any idea of maybe there might be one of Spandau. A Spandau? Yeah. A biopic. You know, we, we spent a long time over the last few years trying to get a musical together. And oh, wow. it was it turned out to be more difficult than we originally thought it was going to be. So, uh, but that would have been nice. But a biopic would be a thrill. Yeah, of course. But uh, maybe you have to be of a certain age before you have your biopic made. And, of course, uh, if they do a George Michael one, surely there will be someone playing you. They yeah. will, yes. And I, well, I doubt if I'd ever need choice in who she is. But, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, it'd be great. It'd be great so if you did. Yeah. Do the show you dance. <laughs> <laughs> just have to be able to dance and do well. Um, uh, we, we should we should talk about the jungle about Roman in it. It was it was amazing actually. Were you proud parents watching? Were you were watching at home? Yeah, we were at home. I would love to have gone to Australia because he actually first said, "I don't know who should come to Australia." And I was like, "Oh, during the winter." But I knew his, his girlfriend was supporting him, so that was lovely that she went. Um, but I knew. My only worry was watching your child be hungry and if he was tearful. But then when he did the first night of the show, when they had to stand... He's not above, seven well, It doesn't anymore. matter how old your son is. He's not going to stop crying because he's yeah, but hungry. Who, yeah, but as a parent, to watch your, you know, when I've always felt sorry for family who watch reality shows when that person is suffering. I used to think, oh, the poor family having to watch that. The thing is, though, um, Martin, yeah. all the Roman going into the jungle, yeah, and I know that... He's done that. But what was harder? I'm a celebrity or the Bear Grylls one that you did? Uh, I, I think the Bear Grylls thing is, um, was one of the hardest things I've ever done in my life. You know, I mean, I loved it. I loved doing it. Being dumped on an island and then four weeks later, you get taken off of it and picked up and you have to survive on your own. That is hard work, you know, but... I'm a Celebrity has been one of our favourite shows. I think we must have watched every, every episode. Every single one, yeah. So we, every the single kids episode. have grew up watching that show. Yeah, so. and, and Roman had grown up since he was six years old watching that first one. And to see him in the middle of that iconic jungle making people laugh and, and entertaining the UK was just something really special, really yeah. special. It was lovely. He did do really well on it, I've got to say. We'll have, yeah, to, was see, really we'll have to see you guys on it next, or maybe on Strictly. That's can the we other just one. get Martin? Then no. I can live in the hotel whilst he's there. Perfect. <laughs> what about you, Jen? Have you ever done it? No, I've never. I've been out. I've been out to I'm a Celebrity. I interviewed them the first yeah. few years it happened. I used to go out and interview everyone. Yeah. So I, I got to see it all and not have to do all those hideous yeah. things. I think you would be good. Yeah. I bet you would be good on it. Yeah. I don't know. I'm a bit scared of anything that's smaller than a dog. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, but look, I just thank you so much for catching up with me today. It's been really lovely. Lovely to chat to someone Real else. Real pleasure. Yeah. I know that's the thing. It gets to the point, doesn't it? Where you're just, it's just nice to have someone new to chat to. Yeah. Oh. Who, who are you living with? Are, are you on your own? Or are you? No, oh, I've got no. I've got my husband and my eight-year-old oh. daughter. And I love it. That's it. It's quite busy. Oh. That's nice. Well, listen, all stay, stay safe. Yeah, stay you. safe. Yes, and to you too. And uh, we'll see you on the other side. I want to come to one of these gigs that you're DJing at, Martin. If you come along, you will, honestly, you will have the best evening of your life. Okay. Absolutely. <laughs> well, that's, that's a bit of a challenge there, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Honestly, it, it, 
it is the most euphoric atmosphere I've ever been in. And uh, there's so much fun. All right. Okay, brilliant. Well, look, have a lovely time. Stay safe in lockdown and we'll see you all soon. All right, lots of love. Cheers then, bye.